All right, hi. Okay, hi. We're going to be talking about Hindu goddesses. You wanted to um, teach me about Hindu goddesses, right? Yeah, right. So wait. Not, uh, teach, not teach exactly, just to discuss. Just to discuss. Okay, so yeah. um, you are um, Aces Republic patron, so thank you for that. And as a yeah. patron, you get to request mm -hmm. meetings like this, right? Um, so thank you so much for being a patron. And again, anybody else watching, if you guys want to um, tier... Here is the second tier above. We get to do these kind of one on one discussions. Well, I actually don't know. It explains on Patreon. Link to, link to our Patreon in the description. Okay. Uh, but um, you wanted to mention, talk about Hindu goddesses. And what are you, what are you, what do you consider yourself? An atheist? Uh, okay. Hindu, so, uh, yeah, yeah. You have heard, you may have heard this term before again, Hindu atheist. So, definitely, I also consider that. So, Hindu. I mean, like, like culturally, I'm Hindu, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an atheist. So, by belief. But uh, mm -hmm. the point is that, uh, like, Harsh Chavda also came to your channel. So, he aligns himself with the Hindutva movement, but mm -hmm. I actually don't uh, align myself with that movement. Mm -hmm. I find that movement problematic and actually very toxic, also, I think. Okay, so you're not Hindutva, you find Hindutva toxic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But I, I you, find Hinduism attractive, but not Hindutva. You find Hinduism attractive, but not Hinduism. Yeah, obviously, I, every I find, religion will yeah. have its problems, but uh, I find that there are very, I mean, what can I say? There is a whole lot of symbolic meaning in the tales, and the tales are also very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Tales are there, and rituals are also beautiful, so yeah. I so find the rituals, I find the stories and rituals beautiful, um, I don't like if it's used as a guide to life. I'm hearing that, but I'm an echo. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 yeah, definitely, that's not true. And I think, like, uh, the point is that, uh, like, that's the difference between uh, Abrahamic religions and Indian. I mean, I mean, uh, there are obviously a certain faction of the society who are very, like, uh, how can I say, they get offended mm -hmm. with everything. But in general, people don't uh, take these, I mean, what can I say, the religious scriptures of Hinduism as some guide of life. Like, I, I don't think many Hindus do that. Like, they don't consider mm -hmm. that as guide for life or anything. Like I mean, Islam they do... The belief in karma seems to have an influence on in their lives. Yeah, believe, yeah. I mean, they, and and they the belief in, in certain philosophies, but not like. But this doesn't it. guide their life in a very specific way. Caste, yeah, like, caste. Yeah, caste system is there, so it is also found in many of the texts. But uh, the point is that, uh, I mean, now Indians are trying to abolish that system. Yeah. Yeah. So again, so not just Hinduism, just belief in superstition. As a whole, yeah, but, is but, but, harms but people. Yeah, but but the thing is that superstitions are actually not uh, based on certain religious texts alone. Like suppose, I can believe I just, that three is a lucky number for me. So mm -hmm. that is also a superstition. That is an irrational belief. But uh, su such things becomes a religion when uh, I mean a whole group of people start believing in such I mean some irrational ideas. And this is not necessary that such uh, I mean irrational ideas are written in some text particularly. It can just originate out of like the culture from just word of mouth or something. Right, but like I'm just saying is believe hmm. belief in superstition as a whole should be fought against. Yeah, yeah, whatever yeah, whatever yeah, the yeah. Yeah. whether the origin is Hindu uh, text or not Hindu text, we should we should be fought. Yeah, against, definitely, right? definitely, right. definitely. Right, right. And yeah, you could enjoy the mythology and the symbolism without actually believing that any of it is true. But I'm hearing a bit yeah. echo. Is there like, do, but, is, but do you have your speakers on by any chance? I'm no? not sure. Do you, you the audio is coming out of your headset only? Or is it coming know. out of your like, hello? No, no, that's your microphone. Hello. That's not your, that's not, that's not the, yeah, okay. Like, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, uh, are you right, getting right. the equation? I'm getting a little bit of an echo, but it's you're hearing it from your headset, right? But yes, not, I'm hearing it. Testing, yes, testing. Speak something. Speak, can you hear me speak now? Something. Can you hear me now? No, uh, okay. I can't hear you now. I'm okay, can you just now. reduce your volume? Just reduce your volume. Okay, Sorry. Let me try. That's okay. All right, but but that's we we were we you wanted to talk about but the I, goddesses, which is very interesting it, to it, me. It, uh, one minute, like I don't know how to reduce the volume of the mic, actually. Not the mic, just the head. The this, no, no, not the the reduce the volume of the headset. The oh, but if I, if I reduce the volume, I can't. I will not be able to listen you. Just reduce <laughs> it a little bit, and to the point that you can still hear me. 
okay, can you okay, do that? Listen, you know. now, now it's okay. Yeah, maybe I should just stop. No, it's okay. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, whoever's watching us, just deal with the echo. Okay. All right. So, let's talk about the symbology and the stories. You wanted to talk about Hindu goddesses okay. as a whole. I thought you want to talk about Kali, yes. but no, you want to talk about all the goddesses. Yeah. So okay. this is why I want to clarify that in Indian texts, more I mean there are several traditions. In many of the traditions, the goddesses are separate, but especially in the goddess cult to which my family belongs, like which is called the Shakta cult, the goddess is only one. There is only one goddess. She just manifests in different forms, but there is only one goddess. Okay. okay? Wait. 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 So okay. Shak Shakta Shakta uh, Shakta Shakta is the name of the religion. The name of the goddess is Shakti. Oh, okay, it means okay. strength or energy or something. It means the word literally means strength or energy or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Cool. Go on. Okay. So uh, this is the yes. So and another difference is like I'm talking about the symbolism. That's why because oh, you got cut. You got cut. Okay. My question is going to be when he gets back is. Is Shakti a common religion in India, or is that just him, his family? You're back? Okay, okay you're okay, back. Okay. Yes. All I'm right. Back. So, by the way, this Shakti thing, okay. this is, a, is this a common religion in India, or is that a common sect, or is that like a fringe group? Yes. Now, uh, see, see, nowadays, like, uh, I mean, Hindus see themselves as Hindus, but uh, just a hundred, I mean, how can I say, 200, 300 years ago, it wasn't like that. Hindus were divided into, I mean, I mean, obviously they were Hindus, but still they, there were several factions and these factions. No, no, I'm not talking about Hindu, common. the Shakti, the Shakti group that you mentioned. Yes, but, but that's what I'm saying. Like uh, just a few hundred years ago, the Hindus were, I mean, they were Hindus, but there were several factions within the society. So Hinduism is an umbrella term for all the common yeah. traditions that exist within the Indian subcontinent. So it's not like yeah, a right. very specific dogma religion or something like that. So yeah, Shaktism is one, shak Shaktism or Shakta, like in, in Indian language, it's Shakta. That is one Shakti. such cult or one such group. So from I which know, my family is it, a, is it a big group or is it a small group? Yes, it, it is. It is quite a big group in the eastern parts of India, especially like Bengal, Odisha, Assam. In the eastern parts mm -hmm. of India, it's it's a prominent group there. It, it's a my understanding group. is that Kali is worshipped at the eastern part of India more than other places. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, you are you are mm -hmm. true. It's correct. Mm -hmm. In fact, there and is I, a. Uh, I, mm -hmm. And I also understand that Kali is a goddess that there's a lot of animal sacrifice and sometimes human sacrifices that are yes, made to yes, her. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, uh, in the in earlier days there used to be human sacrifices. So in the colonial, well, not there, earlier days, sacrifice. last week also. Yes, last week it was there, but it's illegal. But in the colonial, yeah. I mean, before it was, I mean, people used to do that. Like uh, there were like tantric sadhaks and all. They used to do the human sacrifices. But so it, it, does, uh, and there it were, does influence. Like last week, this father, this man, uh, sacrificed, yes, but, but beheaded there, his own yes, wife, were, beheaded his own wife to Kali in yeah, front of I, his I children. Yeah, I have seen that. I have seen that. I have seen that. So it does these influence behavior actually, a little bit. Yes, these yeah. things are actually written in the text. In the mm. uh, in some of the Purans, it's talking about human sacrifices. Human sacrifices are talked about in many of the Indian texts. Like human sacrifices mm. are quite common in Indian texts, and mm. animal sacrifices are still common in my family. Animal sacrifices are done. Like I'm very, mm. I mean, it's done. Animal sacrifices. I don't know whether you are okay with it or not. Animal sacrifices, but animal sacrifices. I think like as long as non-vegetarianism is permitted, animal sacrifices. I mean. Is like acceptable, but uh, I don't. When, I, think, I, mean, I don't think. I think. I. 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 I think I'm okay with animals being killed in um, painless ways, and I think Muslims, Hindus, and Jews yes. do not do not practice animal. You know, no, do no, not no. I mean, practice it. Yeah. Okay, so let me clear it. The Muslims and uh, I mean, I don't know about the Jews, but the Muslims practice the halala method in which the animals are just like the throat is yep. slit and it is kept. But in India, like it is told that an offering is only accepted by the goddess when it is cut with only one stroke. The head has to be beheaded with one stroke only. It can't be, hmm. I mean, otherwise the offering is not accepted. So it is the attempt that hmm. we have to kill the animal with one stroke only. Okay, that's, so called that's better, than, better than the Muslims on that part. Yeah, yeah. So it's like just, trying to, like, how can I say, kill the animal with as much less suffering as possible so it's not like trying to suffer the animal or what about the human sacrifices is that with less but suffering yeah, as possible like if, if you oh you're getting cut again say that 
killing the animal is there. You're getting cut for me again. Uh, Say that again. I mean, I don't know. Okay. Like, say, I mean, human sacrifices are definitely not acceptable in modern society. But it is acceptable by Hindus, by Hindu scripture. I don't know whether it is because of my net connection. Sects of the mm, Hindus, is, yeah, not okay. all. I mean, there are many sects of Hindus who are perfectly vegetarian. So they will not accept even eating, I mean, killing animals. So the, the Hindus are not one thing. So definitely there are a yeah, yeah. lot of different sects of Hindus. Yeah, but again, this what like two wrong doesn't make a right, right? Like, what, two rights? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but this one, okay, so uh, this is what about is them, right? Like yeah, this is so, not... So, no, no, I'm not talking about what about. I mean, I'm saying that, uh, that there are different uh, ideas. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I know, I know. But just, I, like, I feel human, like... Human sacrifices are definitely not acceptable. But this is like... How but can it I is part like many, of Hindu scriptures. Uh, yes. So. But, but it, it was, uh, I mean, what can I say? It was made illegal in the colonial era only. So, yeah. Yeah, but that's so humans being illegal. better than... That's Indians being better than Hinduism. That's not Hinduism. The action of making it yeah, acceptable, but, but, the action of making it acceptable was Hinduism. The action of making it illegal is yeah, not, Hinduism. not Hinduism. So you can't give credit to Hinduism for making it illegal. Yeah, but, you, could give, uh, but, you could give credit to Indians for making it illegal. Yeah, you can say that. But the point is that uh, Hinduism sanctions it means like uh, you can't say the entire Hinduism sanctions it because there are uh, other texts which talk about vegetarianism also. So you can say that Hinduism is actually I understand talking that, about vegetarianism. But this is the double so standard that, that this is the double standard in Hinduism. Whenever there's yes, a good thing, it's not a is like oh it's Hinduism. But whenever it is a bad thing, they're like well we are so yeah, many yeah. different no, things. I, I don't. I don't <laughs> I don't do that. Actually, I, I will yeah, say yeah. that Hinduism has a lot of different things. So it's not only one thing, like every right. kind of contradicting idea you can find in Hinduism. So it's like, yeah, but like that's Hinduism, the problem, though. Like that's it's like that Hindus believe this to say that it is like saying Europeans believe this or blacks believe that or something like that. I mean, it's not one like very specific thing. It's like a very diverse group of people. When we say Hindus, it's a very diverse group of people. Yeah, the problem. Okay, obvious. Every group of people is a diverse group of people are diverse and have yeah, yeah, a diverse but, but, but set of ideas. To, like, yeah, compared with Muslims and Christians, because Muslims and Christians, the diversity is comparatively lesser. But in India, the diversity is like, I mean, at a crazy level. See, it's the problem. Is, the problem is that if you think something is divine, then you know. Yeah. You're giving it authority and legitimacy, even though it's self-contradictory. Like if if you if you this is if you give the good parts of a of a religion authority because it comes from a divine source, then you are also giving legitimacy definitely to the bad parts. Be given. Yeah. Yes, they definitely shouldn't be given. So yeah. I. I'm but anyways, we're going to talk about more about goddesses. Let's go back to okay, goddesses. Okay. Yeah, because I don't know if you want to talk about the religion and whether it's good or bad, we could talk about that. But but. Which one do you yeah, want to yeah. talk Today about? Let us talk about it. Today's let us talk about the goddesses. If, if, uh, but let's come, but come back again. Let's if, talk about like that as well. Like yeah. there's so many things we could talk about. If, okay, but okay. Yeah, so if the time good, permits later, then I will talk about some other religious stuff as well. But uh, let's first talk right. about goddesses. So is Kali the only one that demands sacrifices? Mm, I mean, it's difficult to say. Like it's a. I mean, again, there is no one answer in, in to such mm. questions. It's like. Uh, Kali is, I mean, in the Shakta traditions, the goddess is only one, and goddess demands sacrifices. So goddess can be in mm. any form, but she demands sacrifices. Okay, but so it, in my family, it's also, like a like, goddess. It's like a goddess with multiple personalities that man, like Durga Ma, for example. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. Kamali is a is a clone of Durga Ma, but Durga Ma is like, Durga Ma is like more calm and less angry than Kali, huh? No, is it like, it's not exactly like. I mean, I don't know. It's not exactly described like that. The stories, are, uh, stories don't it? go into the details of the characters. How close is it to like, um, for for people who want to understand this, is, is it at all similar to the Trinity in Christianity? Where God manifests yes, itself. Something like, yes, 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 something like that. It's something like the Trinity, where God is one, but three, something like that. So the, she does manifest in different forms, but she is the one. She is only one. She doesn't. She she isn't not separate entities, but she is only one. But she manifests in different forms. So all the goddesses are one, thing, one entity. Yes, the goddesses but are one entity. But are they entity, separate from all the male gods? Are they are they separate from the male gods then? Yes, in in Shakta theology, there is mm -hmm. one entity called the Prakriti, which literally means nature, and another entity called the Purusha, which means the man. So man mm -hmm. is the like the.
physical part i mean sorry man is the masculine part and prakriti nature is the feminine part so prakriti is the devi that is goddess and purusha is the male god that is vishnu shiva and also it he also manifests in different forms so it is a purusha so this so it's like a yin yang kind of concept yin yang kind mm -hmm. of concept that you find in chinese there's mythology two. also and so it's only two based based on this shakta or shaktism of uh, sect yeah. of hinduism there's only two gods one god and yes. one goddess there's no other yes. it's just two yeah but they manifest in different forms so right. like you can like you can know about the other god story also but you have to know that i mean they manifest in different forms so as and i go through gods, the story it will be more clear these two gods are completely separate though like they are not they are not to the yes. same Actually, one one yeah okay, okay no they also unite they also unite they hmm. unite together to give birth to the universe Oh my god. Okay. So they are actually right, am entangled with one another. They are complementary to one another. They are not separate or different. They are complementary to one another. They complement one another. They okay. remain together. Okay, very so much. Actually, this is a very, very philosophical nice. theological concept. I don't want to go into the D. I mean, I don't I'm not expert enough also to talk about all these things. So I don't okay. want to go into this, the okay, I maybe I may get something stories. wrong also if I story. Tell, 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 tell me the stories. So Okay, so earliest versions of these goddess actually stories. I mean, obviously the goddess cult can be dated back. Some people think that the goddess worship is happening till the Indus Valley civilizations because we find mm -hmm. mother goddess like figurines in Indus Valley civilization. But in the texts, they are less prominent. The the I mean the goddess as we know it today. The the one of the most prominent earlier texts that talk about the goddess. is uh, is uh, devi mahatmya it is a part of the markandeya puran there is a text called markandeya puran it's a part of that and this text called the devi mahatmya in, in bengali it is known as chundi part i am a bengali so it's called chundi the book is called chundi chundi is also a name of the goddess as described in the book itself so it is recited okay this is recited during pujas and it is thought to be an auspicious thing to be recited like the recitation of the quran or something like it's called the the, the recitation is thought to be very holy okay so especially today today is the day called mahalaya it is thought that goddess um i mean how can i say this is a day for the remembrance of the goddess it is thought to be like that mm -hmm. and today especially the book is recited it's very interesting Bengali because I'm, i got some tweets today and some people's telling me that today is a special day and they're going to send me you're going to use today to send special curses against me by the goddesses because of today i don't know what was that about I'm like what is happening yeah, there are some maybe, people maybe Yeah, I mean, they maybe they were talking about Mahalaya, the goddess, the auspicious yeah. day for the goddess. Yeah. They were like they let it her is, anger like crush me or something. It is, it is, it is, it is a a day for remembering the goddess actually, right. remembering the greatness and, of the goddess. The goddess, and they were telling me on Twitter that they're hoping that the greatness of these goddesses crushes me or defeats me or some way, some way. So yeah. I was I was getting actually, cursed extra hard actually, today. First of all, first of all, they don't. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, how much do they understand the philosophical and symbolic interpretations? I don't know. Like they think okay. that goddess is like going to physically kill someone or something. I don't know. Like this is a very foolish idea. What is it? What I is mean, the name of today again? Can you tell me the name of today? Mahalaya. 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 Mohal. Is it Mohalaya? And is it, is it something you say? Can you say Happy Mohalaya? Is that something you say? Happy Mohalaya. Uh, it, it is pronounced differently in different languages in India. In Bangla, we say Mohalaya. In Sanskrit, no, but, it is Mahalaya. No, so but do you say happy? Do you say happy Mohalaya? Is that something people say? Like happy Mohalaya? Yeah, your happy. your pronunciation is closer to the Bengali pronunciation than the Sanskrit oh. pronunciation. Okay, okay. But do they wish people? Okay, okay never mind. But go on. Okay, go. Okay, so okay. we are talking about the Devi. Ma so it is called Devi Mahatmya. The text is called Devi Mahatmya or Chandi, and okay. it is also called Sapta Shati Stotra. So Sapta Shati means Sapta means seven. Uh, Shati means hundred. So Sapta Shati Stotra means seven hundred verses. So it's a words composed. Hi, getting bad connection from India. Hmm. The reason why I was asking him that it was like I was gonna release this video today, and I was thinking of saying when I post it to say like put the title. Are you back, Ronak? Ronak, are you back, Ronak? Okay, I was thinking of wishing people a happy Mohan Mohan. Oh my God, I forgot already. Can't even read my own handwriting. Mohaniyak, Mohaniyak. Mohaniyak. 
back? Are you back? Hmm. Bad connections, eh? Okay. We lost them. All right. So let me talk about... Okay. So here's the thing. Here's the questions that I want to ask him when he's back. Oh, there we go. He's back. Hey, man. Bad connection? Okay, okay. Hi. Yes, yes. Hey. Okay, okay. Continue. Continue. Achha, okay. So, okay. So, first of all, I want to say that uh, one of the ideas of the goddess is that goddess exists in trinity. Okay? So, there mm-hmm. are different versions. Again, it will be very confusing for you for the from the beginning. But uh, as a beginner. But okay. actually, the, uh, first of all, I want to say that the goddess, exi- goddess exists in a trinity. So, it is called Kali, Lakshmi and Sarasvati. So, Wait. Kali is... Kali... Say it three. Say it again. Kali, Lakshmi, Lakshmi, and Saraswati. Saraswati. Is it Kali? The first one that you said is Kali. Is that our Kali? Is that this? No. Yeah. That's the... Yes and yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. So Kali okay. is actually. Uh, uh, okay, so Kali actually refers to the time. Kala means time. So it is like she is right. representing the space, time, and the nature, wild nature, nature in its wildest form. Mm-hmm. So this is the first symbolism. Lakshmi is representing wealth. So she is the goddess of wealth, or Lakshmi itself, the word means wealth, wealth and prosperity. So she is representing oh, human wealth. wealth. Like, because wealth, nature doesn't have any wealth. Like, human gives, I mean, for humans, the wealth has value, right? So it represents mm-hmm. food, it represents wealth, it represents prosperity, and all these. The humans need to survive. Okay, and the Saraswati is the knowledge. She is the goddess of knowledge or knowledge itself. Mm. So it is called Saraswati. So the nature manifests itself in three forms. Prakriti, that is the nature, manifests in three forms. One is Kali, Lakshmi, and Saraswati. So, so this, so the god is this is just the goddesses. Goddess, there's a trinity of a goddesses. Correct? Yes, yes. It is. Okay, yes. okay, okay. And the, now, the reason, and Kali being so angry all the time, is that the, because of the destructive nature of time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It's a symbolism. It, yeah, it's a symbolism. Oh, okay, it's a symbolic cool. interpretation. Okay, cool. Destructive nature of time as well as destructive nature of the, how can I say, the nature itself. The nature itself is a violent place to live in. So that, that's why this mm-hmm. is the violence symbolism, actually. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you can like, say that like, you can say like, that Shaktism in some sense is like an antithesis to the Jainism. The Jains say that Ahimsa Paramo Dharma, that is nonviolence, is the greatest virtue. But in case of Shaktism, they their idea is that violence is inevitable in nature. So goddess demands sacrifices. Nature can't I mean, nature itself inherently is violent, so we can't overcome violence. Even if you want to do agriculture, you need to do violence. You need to kill the pests. You need to uh, do some form of violence at least. So even if you want to feed yourself, you need to kill some animals. Like the tiger needs to kill a deer in order to feed itself. So the nature in itself is violent, so you can't overcome violence. So nonviolence actually is not possible. I mean, ultimate nonviolence is not possible. So this is the this is one of the main symbolisms of Shaktism. Okay, so I was telling that in Devi Mahatmya, that is the book that I will be talking about primarily today, it has three sections. So the first section is dedicated to Kali, the second section is dedicated to Lakshmi, and the third section is dedicated to Sarasvati. Okay, so three sections for the three goddesses. And this is a what, what is this book? The book is Saptashati Stotra or Devi Mahatmya. And what is the significance of this book? The significance is that it uh, it is the primary source of the story of the goddess. It is the earliest source, actually, not the primary source. The earliest primary source of the story of goddesses. And uh, it is recited in the Hindu culture. It's considered to be a very sacred book, like the Bhagavad Gita oh. only. For the Shaktas, oh, wow. it's the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad what Gita is, is for the Vaishnava people. Now? The Krishna worshippers are called Vaishnavas. So for the Vaishnava people, it's uh, Bhagavad Gita. For uh, Shakta people, Bhagavad Gita is also considered, Bhagavad Gita is an universal text nowadays. But uh, this book is also considered sacred, like the Bhagavad Gita only. And what's the the name again? Sorry. Uh, Devi Mahatmya. Devi Mahatmya means the significance of the goddess. Devi Mahatmya literally means significance Uh, of the goddess. The name of the text is that. And is this the main book for the Shakta people? Is See, the there is no no main book. There is nothing called a main book in Hindu. Okay, so, is, is it, is it the most book. important book? Is it their most important book? Is it is it the, is the book that they hold the most yeah, dear? Yeah. 
in some sense. In some in sense. Terms. And this, do the Shakta, it seems like to me, correct me if I'm wrong, the Shakta people, it seems like they care about their goddesses more than their male gods. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, interesting. Is, but that's, that's, is that unique? And actually, is actually, that actually, Hmm. Is that unique okay, to the then. Shakta people? Is that unique? Like because other people, uh, the Shakta yeah, is I it only so. the Shakta? I think so. Okay, okay. There's yes, a delay. In so. other cults, in 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 other cults, the goddess hmm. is there. Obviously, goddess is there in all Hinduism sects. But hmm. in those cults, the goddess is secondary. The male hmm. gods are primary. I mean, or maybe the goddess is complementary, but here the goddess is the primary. So it's a slightly different vision. And actually, I'm, there is a Actually, there is a fight between when you see the goddess cult, like the goddess represents what the nature and the purusha or the male gods represent the spirituality or consciousness or whatever you say. So here mm -hmm. they are showing that the nature is ultimate because nature gives rise to the consciousness. So you can't say that, um, I mean, according to Advaita Vedanta philosophy or Hindu philosophy, they say that Jagata Mithya Brahma Satya. So that means that the world is a lie or an illusion and mm -hmm. only the... Uh, how can I say only the Brahma that is the true God or I mean only one God is there uh, that is the only truth and we all are God so Aham Brahma me like I am the God I mean everywhere we are just I mean manifestations of the God but the world we see is just an illusion it's like the concept of a Boltzmann brain maybe sometime something like that but mm. here the nature is given the ultimate priority like she itself is the illusion but she is the priority she is prior because for that only our consciousness also exists Mm. We, without the nature, consciousness doesn't exist only. So we can't give spirituality more importance than the nature. Hmm. It is also so consciousness, the... consciousness is a product of nature and that's why... Yeah, uh, this is my they... idea. Like, this is not written down directly like that, but this is my interpretations, you can say. Okay. Okay. Sort of. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. It seems yeah, seem like a lot of people just find their own philosophy and they just reflect their philosophy on the symbolism of yeah, that Hinduism. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, that's true for any any story actually. Like that, yeah. that can be true for Game of Thrones story also. You can find your but, symbolism. You know, the, the only problem I have with that is that then um, this is why I think enjoying stories should be separated from philosophy. Because if you mix philosophy with beautiful stories, then people evaluate how good your philosophy is not based on how much logical sense it makes but based on how beautiful your stories are not going to be right and i and i think like we could separate enjoying stories from philosophy these two things but, should be separate but, but yes that things can be separate but some i mean stories always uh, have been and what is the purpose of a story? Like if you can say that, okay, what is the purpose of a uh, running after a fiction? But right. see, the Avengers movies are made. Game of Thrones movies are made. They're spending billions of dollars on, not billions, whatever. Right. So huge amounts of money on that. So they are running after a fiction. We are making fan fiction theories on the Game of Thrones universe yeah. or something like that. We are investing our time on that. So basically, stories somehow like attract us always. Like yes. that's why and I, stories I, 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 hold their importance. Because, yeah, and I think it's, stories are very important. Stories are entertaining. Stories bring us together. I just think, like, I'm just encouraging people to evaluate. Yes, how that, that they, I also believe. I don't think that you should blindly believe in something like, uh, yeah, that, that is what, what I believe. Okay. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, I mean, I would, I would say that even about, like, for example, Harry Potter, right? Harry Potter teach, is like yeah. an, an anti racism book, right? Um, and yeah. I, and I like, and I value that it teaches those, those, you know, it exposes kids to those values. But as an adult, I think you should have, you should be a consequentialist and you should just understand what is right and wrong based on the consequences of the actions and based on the harm that they cause rather than based on the beauty of the stories that those moral mm -hmm. values come with right like i think for children maybe it makes sense to like instill some values in them but sorry but as an adult i think we should move beyond that but anyways that's yeah. my but go on yeah like that's the difference between religion like no one holds harry potter as a sacred symbol but uh, i mean they may like harry potter but they may be harry potter fans but they will not say that harry potter if you say something about harry potter i will be offended no one is going to say that but in right. case of religious uh i mean sacredness this happens so that is a problematic thing definitely 
okay so so okay so now we are talking about these three sections of the tale uh, which we call the saptashati stotra so first section is called the madhu kaitabha vadha so it means the killing vadha means killing so the killing of madhu and kaitabha these are two demons okay or asuras i will, i will see there are two entities in the i am not able to listen to you okay so there oh. are actually two entities in the hindu literature i mean ancient hindu literature devas and asuras now they are translated as gods and demons but they don't actually mean that like they are slightly different but it is like assume that the gods actually have a heavenly abode they they are possess that heavenly abode the asuras they have all the pleasures there okay they have the immortal nectar which they they constantly drink that they survive and the humans give some sacrifices okay so the human sacrifices go to the devas and they with the help of those sacrifices they survive okay so uh -huh. and uh, and they have a lot of pleasure they have the chintamani that is the wish fulfilling jewel they have the kalpataru wish fulfilling tree or kamdhenu wish fulfilling cow so like these are so like magical creatures and all these things they have all the pleasures and luxuries there are apsaras the celestial maidens or like heavenly prostitutes kind of thing so uh, whatever wait what so, heavenly prostitutes yeah like uh, in some sense okay they are celestial maidens like where people will not like if i say the heavenly prostitutes but uh, yeah they are celestial maid the word apsara literally means sound of butter so what but, but uh, i mean this is also has a symbolic meaning i don't know but they are generally presented as like some seductresses and like something like that like right. they are presented like that in the culture okay wait do they so, get paid so for I, sex is that No, no, no. That's why they are not prostitutes. They are just okay. there, like they are just the hoods, hoods of like Islamic mythology. They are just uh, there, like beautiful women. Okay. Okay. So okay just okay. that they are not virgins. They are not virgins. They are not claiming they're, to be they're virgins. Sex, they're sex slaves. No, they are not slaves. That is the difference between hoods and them. Like there okay. are stories of apsara where they decide they curse people also. Like there is a story where apsaras go, they they get attracted by a man, uh, and they go and say that okay, I want to have sex with you, and he he says that no, I I can't, and then he says that okay, when a woman demands sex, uh, you have to give sex. Like otherwise, uh, you are better as a transgender, and say that I curse you to that so that your balls are cut off. So and the balls cut off, and she becomes. I mean, these kind of stories are there. So apsaras are very powerful women also. So. Wait, that, sounded, that, that sounded very anti-trans right there. Mm, I mean, I don't know. Like, it is not. That's the yeah, scripture. Yeah, it is anti-trans means. Yeah, it's a scripture. It's in Mahabharat. The story is there. So it's not anti-trans. I mean, I can't say it is anti-trans or not. See, like, yeah, but it it, obviously, like, 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 you be, like, you're useless. You could be as good as you, they were saying. You could be as good as trans. That sounds like a. That sounds like a very demeaning no, to no, trans no, no. people. No, 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 no. He, he actually, yeah. Like you can interpret it in different ways. Like the, he, uh, actually, yeah. And itself, the premise is very, I mean, ridiculous. Like if a man doesn't want to have sex with a woman, to, you can't you can just go and curse that man. The premise itself is ridiculous. But yeah, I mean, so you can't yeah, see that. Sometimes so we're not in the mood. Like what the hell? Leave us alone. <laughs> no, but actually, he gave the here. The point is that he, the man, gave the argument. Man is Arjuna, so he gives the argument that you are somehow my mother because uh, some ancestor also, some of his ancestor also had sex with that same celestial maiden, and I mean, from her only that the family starts. So he says that you are in some form my mother or great grandmother or something like that. So I can't have, I mean, any relation who, with you. Who, and uh, and yeah, go on. Uh huh. And then what did what? she say? And then she said, "Like you have to have sex with me." No, she right? said that. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, when a woman demands uh, something like that, intimacy, so so you should, I mean, satisfy a woman. So he said that no, I can't do that. And then he says, that, then she says that who, okay, so who? then your uh, uh, what can masculinity of is of not any use. Like it, it is, it is not of any use. So you should who's it, who's be devoid. I mean, you should. Who, Who is it that said that this is one of the ce uh, celestial sex things? Like, wh wh who's the, who's the, who's the person that said this? Or uh, who is the person means? Who's the person that said this? Who is the person means? Who's the person that said this? The person that said that you have Arjuna, to have sex. Arjuna. 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 Is that is Urvashi. 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 Urvashi is the name of the woman, and the man is Arjuna. Okay, Ur Urvashi. What is she? Is she like a goddess? Or she's like a. She's an apsara. She's an apsara, okay. celestial maiden. Okay, so does she have any power? Have celestial power. maidens. Yes, they have definitely. Any... She has. She has a whole lot of power. I mean, so that that's what I was talking about. Okay, like so she's not we like have to tell them something like that. 
So we have to have like a no means no kind of campaign for these celestial beings. Yeah, but but finally, finally, uh, Arjuna says yes, so we that need uh, okay, movement. we need a Me Too movement. Okay, I just for men that story, in so India. Otherwise, otherwise go on, go. On. It will it will require. I mean, become a wrong sense, wrong message. So finally, like Arjuna pleads that no, no, don't do that. So he says that she says that okay, like I understand. So she said, but uh, I have already cursed you, so you have to <laughs> remain a transgender for. You have to remain a transgender for one, once, one year actually. She says that you have to remain a transgender for one year, and uh, actually he was like, there is a whole story. I don't want to go into the details of the story, and Wait. finally there. No, no, I I'm, mean, I'm there... so being a transgender is like a curse then in Hinduism, according to this scripture. Yeah, many, many, many a times it is seen as a curse. Many a times it is, uh, I mean, just there. I mean, it's not always a curse. It's not always a curse. And she was like, and she was like, you, I mean, you're not gonna... the curse was not. See, the curse was not being a transgender. The curse was being like. Suppose you are a man, you are not a transgender, but I just say that, okay, I will cut off your balls. So that's a kind of a punishment for you. Oh, okay. That's what I what it was doing. Like you are not a transgender, but you are just castrated. So that is a punishment. Right, for that's one year. Story. So she was like, yeah. you have to like, have sex with me. It is a very bizarre story. Like so if you cursed. want to say the logic in the story, you can't get. Like because if you can't castrate someone for one year, like that's not, doesn't make sense. But it is a mythical story, so here it makes sense. So he gets castrated for one year. So there is a time, like he had a condition actually. Uh, he was in Agyatavas at that time, so he utilized that curse at that time, and he remained hid in the form of a transgender called Brihannala, so that he he is not recognized. And there is a whole story. I, this is a very long story. So that is okay. Actually, we have passed half an hour just telling a different story. Okay, okay, yeah, tell me. <laughs> so there okay. are so many stories. Okay. So, so I was saying that so these apsaras are there, so they are having like a happy time. The devas are having happy time there, but the po point is that they are never uh, satisfied. You know, they are always under a constant threat from the asuras because asuras again and again come and capture the territory of the devas. And at that mm. time, the devas uh, invoke either Vishnu or Shiva or uh, the goddess. And in different sects, it will be different gods according to the which god is primary in which sect. And the god and the devas come and uh, eulogize that and like help help us. You are this. You are the creator. You are the destroyer. Everything. And then finally, that god comes to the rescue and somehow I mean defeats the asuras and give the land back to their back to the devas. So this is a very prototype which is followed several times in the Indian over scriptures. and over okay, again the demon prototypical story the over and over again this happens over and over again okay 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 over and over so again so this is it's not like they're demons it's just that uh, they are there you know what is this it is called in literature entity. when gods come and intervene and all of a sudden save the day there's a name for that you know what I'm talking about divine intervention divine intervention in stories there's a name for that but go on you go on Okay, so I was saying that now what happens is that here three times this, uh, so there are these things happen, okay. So first chapter is Madhu Kaitavah Vada, so Madhu and Kaitavah are two Asuras or Rakshasas. So what happens in the story is that, so Vishnu is sleeping in a sea, the water, I mean the whole earth is only sea, there is nothing else. And there is a snake, which is called the Sheshanag, and Vishnu is sleeping on that serpent, okay. So this yes. imagery you may have seen earlier also. From his navel, a lotus wait, is born. Wait, you're going born. to the creation. Wait, let's just be clarified. You're going to the very beginning of all the stories. Like you jumping yes, now yes, to yes. the very beginning. This no, is the no, creation. No, I'm not going to the. This is the creation story, but this is a part of the Madhu Kaitavabadha. That is the first section of the book that I'm talking about. The primary right. book, Devi okay. Mahatmya. Okay. 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 okay go the ahead. first first section of that book. So in that story, so the Vishnu uh, the, from his navel, Brahma comes, okay? So from the right. navel, a lotus is born and Brahma is there. What happens is that from Vishnu's ear, the wax from his ear, from that wax, it, it drops. And from that wax, two Asuras are born, Madhu and Kaitabha, okay? So their names are Madhu and Kaitabha. They come and they try to, I mean, they are trying to eat Brahma or they try to attack Brahma. So Brahma starts extolling the goddess she, he t tells that like you are the i mean and he extols him in many ways you are the mother of the universe you are the creator destroyer everything and uh, i mean he refers to the goddess as yoga nidra that is the mystic sleep and asks her to withdraw herself from vishnu so that vishnu can awake and kill the demons right 
Okay. So he asked actually he, he praises the sleep sleep goddess that is yoga nidra and nidra means sleep so he praises the sleep goddess to withdraw herself from vishnu so that vishnu can kill brahm i mean so the kill the asuras so and we finally the goddess and here it one thing is noting that the goddess is eulogized with contradicting words like she is called mahavidya mahamaya so mahavidya means great knowledge mahamaya means great illusion so these two words are placed together mahavidya mahamaya then the next mm -hmm. pair is mahadevi maha asuri so she is the great goddess and the great demoness so mahadevi mm -hmm. maha asuri so like that she is eulogized with contradicting words so basically it means to say that everything is the goddess like the whole nature is the goddess so mm -hmm. the goddess then withdraws herself from vishnu Uh, from all body parts, from the nose, eyes, everywhere, and Vishnu awakes, and Vishnu kills the asuras. If he fights the asuras, and then the goddess somehow bewitches the asuras, and the asuras just uh, get bewitched, and they say that, okay, you can kill us, but you mm. can't kill us on the water. But everywhere there is water, you can't kill us on the water. Yeah. And Vishnu just takes takes them up and puts them in his lap and kills them. So yeah. that is the end of the story. So Brahma is saved, and yeah. that's why she is called Madhu Kaitava Ghatini. So that is the she kills Madhu and Kaitava. So actually, she doesn't kill, but she acts as an agent to kill the Madhu Kaitava. She, I mean, if mm. she wants, then only Vishnu can awake and kill the Asuras. So she is the prime mover, whatever. So then the second part of the story is. Uh, Mahishasura Vadha. That is the main image that we worship in the Bengali Durga Puja, where she is killing a buffalo demon, Mahishasura. Oh yeah, with her I've seen that. A lot, a lot, yeah. So that is the second part of the story, which is the Mahishasura Vadha. In this story, what happens? That uh, same prototype. I mean, uh, the Mahishasura captures the land of the devas. The devas are there. The Mahishasura mm -hmm. goes and captures the land of the devas. And now the devas just go to Vishnu and Shiva to seek mm -hmm. their help. Okay. So Vishnu and Shiva get furious. The devas also get furious. So out of their fury, some great light come out of their bodies, and all the great light assemble together to take the form of a goddess. Hmm. Which goddess? Okay. Uh, she is named several like Chandika and like since this is the goddess scripture, there is only one goddess as I have told. Oh, yeah. But there are several oh, yeah. names, so she is called Chandika or Durga or whatever. So Durga she takes the form of or, Durga. Ma, yes. 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 And she is generally called most of the times she is just called Devi, which means literally goddess. She is only mm. called Devi. Okay. So okay. she is also called Devi. So just Devi. So, uh, so Dur the Devi Durga Ma is, is like where Kali came from. Yeah, but it comes Durga. later. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It comes sorry, later. Sorry. And I, I will tell you the whole story. So, so it's the Devi. Okay, so the Devi is born. So the Devi is given several weapons and jewelries and every accessories by the different fidget, gods. Fidget spinner. There's a fidget spinner. What's that it's, thing? It's not a fidget spinner. It's a Discus. It's called a discus. Like it's a spiked thing. It, it can cut yeah. you. Like if you throw it at it, like it yes. will just cut. It's a weapon. Yes, it's yes. Sharp, sharp blade like thing. Okay. Right, right. So, uh, so she is given a whole lot of different weapons, and then she fights with Mahishasura with all her like weapons and everything. And there is a whole lot of description of this terrific battle going on. A Game of Thrones like kind of scene is going on. A different violent activity, whatever. Nice. And finally, the and and there are also references to the goddess being intoxicated. Okay, she is drinking some kind of um, some kind of a wine or something, and she is intoxicated with that, and sh her eyes become. Red and she is furious, and she kills the Mahishasura. Okay, so and finally she kills her, and Mahishasura also takes a, a lot of shapes. Like she wants to kill the buffalo, then the, she he be, he gets out of the buffalo and takes the form of a some other elephant or something like. He shape shifts several times, and finally the goddess is steps on her neck or something, and finally she like finally kills the buffalo demon. Okay. Yes, yes, I've and seen that. that finally, there's a lot of art on that last scene. There's a yes, lot. Yes, yes, yes. Like, that is the that is the image that that the shaktas, I mean, worship the Bengali people especially worship during the Durga Puja event that happens in right. Bengal. That is the that's image the image that, that they're worship. sending to me today as a threat against me. That's the that's the big image maybe, that they're sending. Yes, yes, uh, yes, and yes, also, yes. they they call me like in the past week. I've been called an Ashura by so many people. So. Yes, so yes. I will come from... to that. I I will just yeah, come, come to that story. I will say why why they okay. called you the asura. I will come to that. Asura, story. asura. Yes, yes, yes. 
and here i want to mention one thing that here the intoxicated goddess as i have told and it is very important to note that in the tantric literature according to the tantric pujas like when we do kali puja in bengal the goddess worship mm-hmm. in bengal we offer her wine we offer her alcohol mm-hmm. okay so this is a offering to the goddess and this is taken by everyone okay so it is a like a prasad what, the alcohol is taken so in the re- oh so the off like they, in real life what how does this look like they go and give wine to the gods and goddesses but they end up drinking it themselves yes yes, yes. They, like the like so like they, all other food they also give food also they also give a lot of food they give the food to the gods and goddesses but they end up eating it Yes, 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 yes. That's the thing. They give the food, then they offer some mantras. They will recite some sh- hymns and all, like, okay, please eat this food, something like that, which literally means something like that. And then they will offer the food and I mean the flowers and everything on that. And they will, uh, like, they will assume that the goddess has eaten this food, and then they will eat that food as a prasad. Okay. But how could you assume the gods and goddesses ate the food if you then eat the food yourself? What? How can you assume okay, okay, that? Okay, okay, okay. So this is, uh, this is a. I mean, yes, th- that is where religion comes into play. Okay, <laughs> so in religion, everything is possible. Yes, this is not a logical thing. But uh, the point is that, and uh, in order, like there, I mean, nowadays, like they only don't assume. They also mm-hmm. say that okay, it's like uh, okay, if the if we are everyone is. in front of it then the goddess will not come and eat because everyone is seeing how can goddess come and eat in front of everyone so they cover the room with a cloth and everyone goes behind and uh, and they assume that goddess has literally come and eaten the food they cover the room and or close the door of the room and they assume that My the goddess God. has come and eaten a bit of that so this, this is, is kind of like a belief this kind of like this kind of like kids making like kids. you know Like oh here's the Barbie drinking a cup of tea and then you know yeah, like yeah, they're it's pretending like that, but, but they, yeah yeah but yeah, you yeah. can't like yeah I mean yeah, okay. you can't ana- logically analyze everything in religion definitely so well, whatever so the yeah. alcohol is also offered to the goddess and the bali that is animal sacrifice that is given that meat is also cooked and offered to the goddess similarly so the meat is offered after cooking and that is also eaten by everyone the meat okay right. Okay, then the, let's come to the third portion. The third portion of the story is Shumbha Nishumbha Vadha. So the, you were called Shumbha Nishumbha by someone. So uh, some Twitter account said that okay, Shumbha Nishumbha also called Kali sexy or something like that, and so you are like him or them only something. Someone said something like that. Right. Yeah. And uh, so. Sh- Shum, so Shumbha Nishumbha are similar stories. There they capture all the lands of the devas and everything. So devas again go to the Himalaya mountains and they start extolling the goddess again. Okay, they start. Okay, and after the Mahishasura Vadha, the goddess, uh, the devas were like praising the goddess, and the goddess promised the devas that whenever they will call her, she will come back to their rescue. The, mm. She promised it. Okay, so they again. Uh, well, here, I have a question. Why do the asuras even try if the devas, if the devas have the gods on their side? I mean, they lose every every single time. They lose. Why do they even try? Yeah, like, that, that's you know, a do they have any? Question. Do they have any super like giant like, like giant. demon power on their side, or is it just like, like do they have anybody to intervene for them in battle, or is it just the devas have the gods and they don't have anybody like a higher power? I mean, it seems like there's the Asura seem like idiots yeah. But actually, if they go into actually, battle actually, knowing that <laughs> at any time. Actually, at actually, any time, many, many. <laughs> right, go on. Okay, many of the times it is told that the gods are actually—I mean, the asuras actually take boons from the, the gods and like something like that. There are also stories like that several times. They get okay. boons from the gods and they get immortal of some sort, but the gods find a loophole in the story and then they kill them. So it's a prototype. I mean, see, you—I mean, if you say that this is happening again and again, but for the writer of that particular story, it's not happening again and again. For that particular, for that writer of this story, this happens only one time. But this mm. prototype is followed by several authors, and they are also writing up the same story but with slight variations, and uh, they are making their own creative imagination as well as their own philosophical points into the story in some way or the other. Right. So that is the. thing that is happening but the one who is writing one story he thinks that it happens only one time he doesn't say that it is happening again and again there is also a really? like, like foolish people who comes again and again so yeah okay so the the other so stories they are, they are not saying so the anything people... they are not discussing about it that's mm-hmm. it they are not saying that the asuras again and again come they are not directly saying that it is it is just that they are telling about one particular narrative 
or two right. or three particular narratives. Right. They are not saying about these infinite narratives of devas and asuras where again and again this thing is happening. Okay, they okay. are not discussing okay. that. That's okay, the, okay. And and actually, you can read the. I will say that um, there is a person called Devdutt Patanayak. So he wrote, I mean, I don't agree with all his views, like uh, whatever. And the Hindus but definitely doesn't like him at all. But uh, he, is, uh, he has his books written like Seven Secrets of the Goddess. And uh, you can read those. I mean, you don't need to read those books. These are available as audio in in audio books in the YouTube. So you can just search Seven Secrets of the Goddesses and listen to them. He explains the symbolism of the stories, like what the Devas represent, what the Asuras represent, what the Goddess represents. And these are all some natural uh, I'll things. Put the, I'll not, put them in I'm, the description. I'll link to them in the description. So. Okay, okay. And, and the point is that uh, he is actually... Um, I mean that uh, he, I mean Devdutt Patanak, when he explains these stories, he tells it more from an, like a an very naturalistic perspective. He doesn't like tell the stories from a spiritual perspective. So you can, I mean, you may like that stories, maybe. Hmm. I mean, they're symbolic. Can I put I mean, my own spin? Like, like what do you think about like given that so many authors throughout history put their own spin on these goddesses? Why can't we do the same thing? Like, why can I take these goddesses and change them a little bit the way I like it and put my create my own fan fictions based on Kali, you know, change Kali a little bit. You know, for example, Ka the Kali in Hinduism, she's like angry and violent because time is destructive. But in my view, time, we're make everything is getting better with time. Again, I have to plug this book. If you read this book, you can see that think time is not destructive. Time is making everything better, right? So if Kali represents time, to me, my Kelly, she's not angry because time is not destructive, to, in my opinion, right? So can I, like, take these symbolism and, you know, twist them and change them into, to my own liking? Make my uh, own fan if you allow me sufficient, If you allow me some time later, I will tell about this as well. Okay, I will, good. I, I, have, I have actually planned about it. Oh, really? Okay, okay wow. That's interesting. Okay, okay. <clears throat> So let us first talk about quickly about the Shumha Nishumha. So they start uh, extolling the goddess and they say, this is a very special special words actually. It is called Ya Devi Sarva Bhutesh. This is called the Tantrokta Devi Sukta. And this starts, I mean, this has a part of it is like this. Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Shakti Rupena Sangsthita Namastasyai 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 Namo Namaha. It means the goddess who resides among everyone in the form of strength, we salute her. Okay. And mm. this verse is repeated a lot of times, just replacing the word strength with other words like intelligence, sleep, hunger, shadow, energy, thirst, patience, uh, modesty, peace, faith, beauty, good fortune, character, memory, compassion, contentment, mother, delusion and error. And also caste, jati, which is called jati, but jati, people may say that jati doesn't mean caste, but uh, I think it some, means something like caste. So mm. she also resides in the world. I mean, whatever. So but you can ignore that. But uh, so she's so giving legitimacy to caste. Yeah, in some sort. They oh, are yeah, giving legitimacy. In the Bhagavad Gita also they talk about caste and they give legitimacy to caste. So yeah, you can you have to always ignore that part when you are trying to I mean understand the beauty of Bhagavad Gita or beauty of these texts. You have to ignore these parts or you have to accept that yes, some parts are problematic, but there are other parts which may, may not be that problematic or which may have some good message as well. So you have to accept. That. But again, I have to remind everybody. You have to accept with a pinch of salt. Like, see, like people like I want to say that like people like true Indology and all this. I mean, they study history, but they have an assumption that anything can't be wrong. Anything when we say that okay, this text has this, they will say that this is a misinterpretation. This is Christian propaganda. This is Muslim mm -hmm. propaganda. Atheist propaganda. Mm -hmm. This propaganda. I mean, they will just attack that, but they will never accept that there can be problems in certain mm -hmm. parts. But as a whole, the thing may not be bad like you can see it in your own way i believe that like i don't think that everything is bad but i think that obviously if a person is writing something there can be problems with their views i mean you are writing something it doesn't mean that you will be correct everywhere you may have some problematic ideas but it doesn't mean that you are wrong everywhere so i mean i don't know why the people can't accept that well because they think it's a divine origin doesn't it that's why it has yeah, to be yeah. See, they think that it is a divine thing and whatever yeah. and uh and, and then uh, comes Parvati. Okay, so the goddess are eulogizing, and there is Ganga. Hima, you know that Ganga originates from the Himalaya mountains. So Ganga is flowing, and Parvati. Parvati literally means woman of the mountains, but in Hindu culture, she is the wife of Shiva. 
So I will come to that later story that where from the Uri Parvati originate. But Parvati is passing by and she came to bathe in the waters of the Ganga. And she was asking like, who are you praising? Who are you praising? Who are you worshipping? Something like that. She, she asks the Devas and, the, and from her body, a bride, another body comes out. Okay. Mm. And that, that uh, tends to that, keep happening in Hindu stories. It seems like. Yes. Yes. That, that tends to get, and you can they see burn, that, yeah. see the there is one common difference that in Quran and Bible, they don't ever say that these stories are metaphorical. And this is interpreting oh. Quran and Bible in metaphorical sense is only by modern apologists. They say that oh. Quran may be interpreted metaphorically. But these texts are saying that these are metaphorical because otherwise, which physical goddess resides among everyone in the form of intelligence? Like, what does that I mean, there is not a physical thing happening here. Definitely, it's a metaphorical text. So they are making it clear again and again that they are talking about certain metaphors. They, are, they don't claim to be physical tales. That is to be okay. very clear. By the way, can we keep this under one hour and do part two and part three and part four, like instead of like doing it all right now? Because I, mean, I want to uh, keep. Okay, so is that okay? So when or will do you, you want to do the other parts? Or when will you do the other parts? We could do like one every week. Can we do one every week? Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, or it's okay. up to you. Unless you want to continue, go make this. I just think more people will end up watching these if we have specific topic for every video, like with a very specific topic, okay. and then actually, do one hour every time. That, uh, I, I, okay, okay, okay. Actually, I, I have prepared this. Uh, one thing you can do is that we can keep it under one hour, and then you can uh, upload another video. I mean, we can shoot the video now only. You can upload it later on. You can do that. I mean, if you want. Okay. I mean, if you agree, I, I don't know. Well, I mean, if, if, uh, yeah, I, I think we'll let's do it multi let's do multiple sessions. How about I mean, if you that? have okay? time, if you have time. Okay, okay, I feel bad. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. All right. Because you made time. I, mean, I, I want to make I'm sure that, that I'm... you can record the whole video. You can record the you can record the whole video and then later on like cut it into two or three parts and give it. Well, I don't I don't think I could do like that long. I can't sit here that long because I have so many other things to do as well. So I think we should do it in multiple parts. Is okay. that okay with you? Okay, okay, okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it will, it will take uh, more half an hour. I think it can take more one hour, another one hour maybe, if I want to complete okay. the material. Okay, can we do the next hour like next I mean, week? English. Or maybe even we could do okay, it like in a couple of days. Is that okay? I'm just completing this part of the school. You okay. sound disappointed. I'm sad. I don't want to disappoint you. Are you disappointed? No, no, no. no. Not... Okay, okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm not disappointed. Okay. I'm not disappointed. Okay. Okay, okay. No, no, as you wish, because, yeah, okay, because uh, you're like teaching me this is really good. This is very interesting stuff, okay? So this is part one. Yeah, actually, uh, I, want, I mean, if you have, if you have, uh, if you have one hour extra time, then we can complete it today. Otherwise, if you think that you don't have, no, no, let's do it. Do let's that. do it another day because I, yeah, because I need to do other things as well. But and I, and I don't want to yeah. do it just two parts. I want to continue going to Hindu mythology with you, like continuously, like go into a lot more detail. Like, is that okay? Like, can we do like I don't know, like ten episodes or something or more? Is that okay or no? Yeah, you can. Like, yeah, yeah, I can. I can. I can tell you stories. I mean, see, there is one way. Like, uh, I mean, because there's you so many stories. Accurate okay. stories. Yeah. Yes, yes. If you want very accurate stories, like, uh, uh, how can I say, very accurate stories, then I can't. Uh, I, I don't know whether I'm eligible to tell that or not. I'm not a Sanskrit expert. So, it's fine. but if it is just about the cultural stories that we listen and that we know and in a rough idea of the sense, then I can right. tell. Uh, yeah, yeah, just a rough I, idea. I some we don't need... Just a just yeah. a rough version. Okay, just a rough version is fine. It's already you already okay. say it beautifully, and, and I just, like. Uh, okay, yeah. And, uh, and yeah. yeah. And before that, I uh, I just wanted to discuss with you, like regarding that. Uh, for this video, I want to end this video. And there is actually for Devi Mahatmya another portion is remaining, so we will do it later on. And uh, one thing that I wanted to discuss with you is uh, very shortly that that growing intolerance in the Hinduism uh, is actually very surprising. That uh, like you, what, what you did actually, I didn't. I mean, I'm very frank that I didn't like your cartoon because your cartoon actually didn't. Uh, I mean, not because I was offended, but because it doesn't represent actually what Kali is. It is a mm. different version. I mean, it is your cartoon, but it's not what Kali is described as in the text. So it is yeah, not the Kali that the Hindus worship. It's yeah. yeah. So that, that I don't know what what is there to be offended because it's not the Kali they worship. Yeah. It's a different cartoon. It's my so Kali. I don't know what there to be. Yeah. Worship. No, but, but yeah, again, but nobody, like nobody has. Now and yeah. So that's why. That's why I can understand. 
Yeah, okay, but I can still understand why they are offended. I mean, obviously, some people can get offended, but sometimes yeah. I don't even understand like why the people are offended. Like, suppose, uh, yes. So suppose uh, there is a text called uh, one, "What Happened Some Days Ago" that every day they run a Twitter trend like boycott Netflix because they are making Hindu for big shows or they are dis- insulting Hinduism and all these things. So there is one uh, particular film where there were two characters named Krishna and Radha. Okay, so they were just characters. They were modern life characters. They didn't have anything to do with the mythological or historical Radha Krishna. Okay, so they were just two characters, but they were like. How can they show a sex scene happening between two characters named Radha and Krishna? They are so Hindu phobic, and they are running a Twitter trend and all this. So I was like, I mean, and moreover, I mean, I thought that okay, even if that was real Radha Krishna, the mythological or historical Radha Krishna, I think that is also not problematic because in the text there are erotic descriptions of relationships between the two characters. Right. And uh, like I, I just posted these. I just want to mention, like, and, are you have you seen fan fiction? Fan fiction of like yeah, popular yeah, yeah. stories. So a lot of times yeah, in the fan, a lot of times story. in fan fictions, the personality change. Sometimes their the looks change. Um, so I yes. mean, when we're talking about fiction, you can't say like, "Oh, this is Kelly or "This is not Kelly." It's fiction. It, it, yeah, if it's, it's fiction, fiction, you can put your own twist. To it. It, it, it like, I mean, it's not a real thing for it for us to even decide whether this is the real Kelly or not the real Kelly because there is no real Kelly. You know what I mean? Like, how okay, could this be like yeah. real or not? Like, I mean, when some, for example, when you see fan fictions of Harry Potter, who get like is like, well, this like the fan when you read fan fictions of Harry Potter and Harry is like acting in a different way, or maybe Harry looks in a different way, you could say like, this is the real Harry or not real Harry. Like, is that really a conversation that we're gonna have? Like, what does it even mean to for that Harry in the in that fan fiction Harry Potter to be the real Harry? When there is no such thing as a real Harry Potter, do you know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that... I understand. Yeah, I understand. yeah. So I was I was making the point that uh, so I posted this verse that this is taken from a very sacred scripture called the Gita Govinda, written by a 12th century Vaishnava poet about Radha and Krishna. So Radha is saying that during I mean they are having some intimacy, intimate moments, and Radha says this with great pleasure. He had me lie down on a soft bed of tender blossoms, and feeling highly elated, he reclined upon my heart. I tightly embraced and kissed him, and he, being under the powerful influence of Ananga Rasa, Ananga Rasa, you. which means something like a desire, uh, like a, I mean, excitement or something, returned the embrace and repeatedly drank the nectar of my lips. Oh, Sakhi, he is dearer to me than my very life. Arrange for me to meet with him at once. A sudden, unexpected surge of rapture during the pleasurable experience of passionate love with him caused my languid eyes to close. And uh, like this, there are very erotic things written. So I shared these verses, and they were like, "What are you saying? Like this is this is not any scripture. This is the sex story of your mother. I mean, like, what are you? I mean, who is defaming the Hindus? I mean, I'm t- I'm quoting scriptures, and you are saying that this is sex story of my mother. I mean, what? I mean, even if it is, it doesn't matter. But the point is that. What is the point? I mean, you are not comfortable with your own scriptures, right? I mean, what kind of intolerance? Why are they so offended by? Know. Why are they so offended by everything with sexuality? Like, why is that so? I don't know. This has much to do with the Christianity and Islam because you can see the, yeah. I mean, the imagery of women in Islam and Christianity, like the virgin mother, like. In right. Christianity, if you want to be holy, you have to be virgin. You have to be very like virginity is the must. Yeah. Okay, purity so you, culture, you modesty culture, purity them. culture, yeah. and all that crap, right? In in Indian uh, context, the mother just see the Kalima. Kalima is often described as Viparita Ratatura, that is in reverse quetus. She sits on the top of Shiva in a very and in, in quetus. Okay, in order to do quetus, she sits on the top of Shiva, and she is naked. She is wild. She is killed. She is. Uh, I mean, just see this image. She is dancing on the top of Shiva, stepping on Shiva, and just compare this image of the mother with Virgin Mary. Con- mm. Complete contrast, right? So yeah. that is the reason. I mean, uh, why is it that they go Virgin after Mary? mothers uh, as insults? Uh, for, uh, like this is something when I, when when Muslims were offended at what, the work that I do, I noticed that a, a lot of the attacks seem to be going after the female members in my family, right? Uh, instead mm-hmm. of me directly, and then when the Hindus mm-hmm. got offended as well, it was exactly the same thing. So it was very much like yeah. when the Muslim got offended. Why do you think that is? Like they go after the female members of the family. Like is that is that like male honor, like misogyny yeah, or something? Misogynistic, maybe. 
Yes, yeah. there is misogyny. Uh, the point is uh, that uh, they think like I mean, their logic is that you abused their mother, so they will abuse your mother. But that doesn't hold. Like that story is itself yeah. a that's a very weird story. I, I like so they wouldn't get upset. They wouldn't get upset if my first cartoon was of Krishna, for example. There wouldn't be such of a backlash, would it? I mean, there would be backlash. Yes, but there, there, there may be backlash, but much less. See, 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 and moreover, less. in Indian culture, since the cultures are inherently sexist, all cultures are inherently sexist. So, right. like when you say that you want to, um, I mean, marry a goddess or have have sex with a goddess, that is seen as a kind of a subjugation. Whereas when you huh. say that you want a, right. a god as a husband, that is seen as a kind of submission. Submission. See, this is their misogyny yes. showing, and they call me misogynist. Yes. yes. So when uh, there is a saint, uh, there are many saints who call that like the God is my husband and something mm. like that. It's perfectly fine. I mean that is very good. There are, I mean in India there is a vrat called a uh, Shiva Ratrika vrat, jo bhi ho. So mm. uh, Shiva Ratrika vrat. So th- this is th- in this vrat the women say that they do it because they want a husband like Shiva. They mm-hmm. want a husband like Shiva. That's why they worship Shiva. But th- you can't do this with a female god. Like I worship the female god because of wi- I want a wife like that. No, you can't do that. That is insulting. <laughs> so this is uh, inherently sexism yeah. that exists in all cultures. And obviously, this is there. Because obviously, Very... it's seen that the wives are subservient and the husbands are like. This dominant. is so interesting, is man. What this is so interesting. Anyways, I'm gonna go because um, mm. the food is ready yeah, yeah. right behind. Okay. But can can we do this more often? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Are you sure? Okay. Sorry, I couldn't go for yeah. longer, but I, I will. Longer, that's what she said. Um, anyways, but um, but again, but this is very interesting, and I really, really appreciate you yeah. teaching us about this. Okay, so I hope you don't. You're not disappointed that we didn't go for two hours. No, no, I can I can discuss with you later. Anyway. Okay. Thank yeah. You. Like not just not not just two episodes. I want to learn about Hinduism like a lot, and I it's it's really fun. To, okay. And can we actually have like images to go like? Uh, next time so that it's more like people can relate to like maybe like when we're talking about things like have charts of which god comes from where and maybe the like show the, I, yeah, I mean then it, I have to prepare. no no you Actually, tell me I, I like mean, give me give I me the list pre- of images no no you can tell me i'll try to prepare them maybe okay yeah yeah all okay, right anyways okay. Okay. let me just sub- Actually, and, and uh, sub- uh, rec- yeah go on go on Nothing really. Actually, something? I could have also prepared, but actually, I'm doing a PhD now, so it's actually. What are you doing a PhD in? Uh, I'm doing computer science. Oh, okay, 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 cool. Um, okay, guys, everybody that is watching, please like and subscribe. We're gonna have more discussion of Hindu Hindu gods and goddesses, sexy Hindu gods and goddesses, and also if you're a patron, um, you want to do video discussions with me. Um, message me and also link to our Patreon is in the description. Thank you to anybody who's supporting us. And again, if you're struggling financially, do not support us financially. Okay. If you're struggling financially, do not support us financially. Uh, Let me end this.